Hello folks, this is Mr. Dickin here. In this video we are going to be discussing quadratic models and how we can do a quadratic regression. So how we can use our calculators to create quadratic equations. So before we get into that, let's just do a quick little recap of the things we've been discussing thus far. So here I have an example. Um, we are given two different scenarios dealing with rockets. So we have scenario one in which there's a rocket that was launched and they give us an equation. So anytime there's an equation given, that's going to be important. And then they have scenario two in which there's a rocket that was launched and we have this lovely little graph. So far in this unit, we've always been discussing pretty much two things. We've been discussing what is the y-intercept, so that would be this point right here. And then we've been discussing what is the vertex, so that would be that point right there. Now the y-intercept is the starting height, so in this case we're going to start off, it looks like, on the ground for that scenario, for that graph. And then the vertex is always going to be the maximum height. So it's asking us which rocket flew higher. Well, for the first scenario, the highlighted in yellow scenario, this guy right here, really all I have to do is figure out the vertex of that. And to do that, I'll find the axis of symmetry, so the opposite of B over 2A. I'll get my X value. That X value will then get plugged back in to figure out my Y value. Over here on the graph, it's looking like this point right here is going to be my vertex, so I'd call that 6, comma, I don't know, 575, if I were to guesstimate. So let's see. All right, so it looks like for rocket number one, the yellow highlighted graph, if we do our computations, we're going to get 5, comma, 376. And over here for the graph, this is just kind of ballpark. That's why the ish is there for our vertex. So it's asking us which rocket flew higher. Well, that's going to be these y values because the x value represents the time, the y value represents the height. So clearly rocket number two flew higher by about 200 feet. All right, so now let's jump into a scenario in which we don't really know a whole lot about an equation or a quadratic. However, we're given three separate points and we need to come up with the equation. Now, this is possible to do by hand. However, it's an absolute pain in the rear. So, thankfully, we have calculators to assist us here. We're given a quadratic, and we have no idea uh, what the vertex is, what the y-intercept is. We know nothing. So I can't use standard form yet. I can't use vertex form. I can't really do anything. I am, however, given three separate points. So they've given me three separate x-y coordinates. So each one of these is a point on my parabola. Ooh. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the quadratic regression feature on my TI calculator. And I'm going to type all of my x values into the list 1. And then I'll type all of my y values into list 2. Once I've done that, I can select quadratic regression, and it's going to give me the values for A, B, and C, assuming that we are written in standard form. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I've got my trusty calculator here. First thing we need, first thing we need to do is turn it on. And I'm going to go to Stat, and then Edit. And right now I'm noticing I don't even have an L1. So I probably accidentally deleted that at a previous point. Um, if you ever hit delete while the title is highlighted, you'll delete that entire list. And we typically don't like that to happen. So to undo that, press stat and then go down to option five. Hit enter, hit enter to run it. Now it should be good to go. So when I go back into stat and edit, hey, L1 is back. All right, so for L1, I'm going to plug in my X values. We had one, two, and three. And then for L2, I'm going to go negative two, negative two, and negative four. Now, just using a little bit of logic over here, I should make note that 
I'm seeing these two Y values are the same. So chances are my vertex is going to be smack dab in the middle of those two X values. So I'm anticipating my vertex is going to be 1.5 comma something, but we're not asked to find the vertex. We just need to figure out the equation. So once we have everything in our list, we're going to go back to stat over to calculate and you're going to go down to option five, which is quadratic regression. It's going to ask you to confirm where your X values in list one. Yep. Y values are in list two. Yep. Frequency list, ignore for this class and go down, hit calculate. So there we go. When written in standard form, the equation is going to be negative 1x squared plus 3x minus 4. So we have y equals whoop, negative 1x squared plus 3x minus 4. I have no idea what happened over there with my pen. Interesting. All right. So now we have another example. We're given three points, and we need to find the regression line. Technology to the rescue. So we'll go to stat, edit. I need to clear these lists out. So anytime on a clear list, I can press clear while the title is highlighted. And when I go down back into the list, everything is gone. I need negative one, positive one, and two. Over in L2 is gonna be my Y values. Again, I'll clear those out. Six, four, and nine. Six, enter, four, enter, nine. Then we go stat. Over to Calc, option five. If you don't want to scroll down to five, you can just press five on the keyboard and it'll get there for you. And we have two, negative one, and three. Sure enough, those are our coefficients, right? Two, that's technically a negative one, and then three. Yay. All right, last one here. We have someone throwing a baseball doesn't really say baseball. I just assumed it was a baseball. Maybe it's a beach ball. Someone throws a ball of sorts, a mysterious ball, off the top of a building and records the height of the ball at different times as shown in the table. Apparently, this man has absolutely zero regard for the bystanders who are down on, on the, uh, the ground who might get hit with said ball. Hopefully, it's not a bowling ball. That could be tragic. So, we want to find the quadratic model for the data. Here, we are given four points. Now, when you're creating quadratic functions you technically only need three but the more points you can have the better okay so the more points you'll have the better the more accurate it might be especially if the points don't fit don't fit an exact uh, quadratic model so let's go ahead and let's enter in our data points here so the time will be our x values that's going to be pretty common time is almost always going to be your x value so 0, 1, 2, 3. L2, we have 46, 63, 48, and 1. Oh, what did I just do? And 1. Okay. That was weird. So we go stat over to calc. Option 5, quad reg. Enter, 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 enter. We're getting negative 16, positive 33, and positive 46. So that positive 46 is our y-intercept, and we kind of already knew that because we have 0, 46 on our graph. And then negative 16, that's going to be a pretty common theme. Uh, that's just acceleration due to gravity when you're dealing with feet and seconds. All right, so now we have our equation given to us. Let's use this to estimate the height of the ball at 2.5 seconds. So what they just told me is that my x value is going to be 2.5 and they want me to find the y value. Well, technology to the rescue. We got negative 16 times 2.5 quantity squared plus 33 comma 2.5, not comma, parenthesis, that was that, plus 46. And that's going to be 28 Point five. So if I clear this out, come on now. Excellent. 
And what was the maximum height of the ball? AKA maximum height. What was the vertex? More importantly, it's asking what was the y value of the vertex? That might take the cake as my sloppiest handwriting I've ever had in these videos. Awesome. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to do our negative b over 2a process and then plug that back in. Actually, you know what? I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to type this thing in, negative 16x squared plus 33x plus 46. See what the graph looks like? I probably won't be able to see it. All right, I'm going to change my y max to, to be much higher. So I'll go to my window. Let's go y max. Crank that up to like 75. Now let's take a look. Awesome. So I need to figure out the highest point. I'll go second and then calculations menu. I want to find the maximum. It's going to ask for a left bound somewhere over here to the left of my max. Right bound somewhere to the right. Doesn't matter how far, just clearly to the right. All right, so it looks like my maximum was 0 0.09 comma 46 point stuff. Let's see how accurate that is. Holy smokes, what did I do wrong? Did I plug something in wrong? Ah, there it is. I did 3, not 33. Holy cannoli. All right, so I'm going to insert a 3 there. Now let's take a look at the graph. All right, so same process. Second, calc. Option four is max. Left bound. Right bound. There we go. Now we're cooking. So our y value there is going to be the maximum height. I guess with that calculator snafu, it would have been faster to do the negative b over 2a process. Whoops. All right. So that does it for our quadratic regressions. You know the drill, folks. If at any point you have questions, don't hesitate to let me know. As always, good luck, have fun, be safe, roll tide.